All right, YouTube, we're here with a little more Grixis Death Shadow today. Um, oh, this hand. I'm going to draw. I'm going to keep it. I have two discard spells. If I hit another land, I'm in good shape. But if I don't hit a land, this is likely just I'm in a lot of trouble. I, basic Island is good. So that means that I have time. Okay, nice. Um, I'm going to lead. So I'm getting watery great for this. So I might as well just do this now. Okay, so we're playing a blue moon kind of deck here. I think this is a pretty straightforward Vendillion click. Likely going to take this Spell Snare as it trades my Snapcaster Mage at some point. It's a good pickup. Likely should have fetched before Serum Visioning. That was a mistake. It's okay. We're, we're likely going to want to... We're going to cast two blue spells next turn. One of them can be a Serum Visions if we go top, top. Platinum Imperion. Well, you can keep that, sir. So they, they're playing the Madcap Experiment deck. Alright, um, I don't mind eluding. These stubs are going to be absolute aces if we can get a threat into play. We get Blood Moon right there out of Pute. So we're going to do this first. Um, I should have cycled first. I, I always get confused with what I should do with this. So... So I can play around Blood Moon. I think that ship has sailed. I think we're looking to go pedal to the metal with a Death Shadow here. So let's go get let's go get a Steam Vents and cast Serum Visions. I'm going to play this Shadow, Bait Out, in a Braid. Let's hope we don't get Jaced. Jace would suck. Jace would suck a lot. Nice. Game over. I'm just gonna hold this. Well, no, I should have gone fetch shock and then just probably not done anything with my mana. Yeah, I'm all over the place. I gotta focus here. I should have gone fetch shock probably and then just held up these two stubborn denials. Alternatively, my opponent's probably not winning this game with me having two stubs. That's shock. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any need to move yet. Because he's dead next turn. Next turn we'll get aggressive. But for now, we're just going to sit behind two Stubborn Denials. Platinum Imperion costs eight. Okay, so hang on. We're just going to stub this Flame Slash. 
and then they're on a no outer because that gets countered. So this gets countered. They were at 14, right? Did I? They're at 14. So like I had a fetch shock to nine, put them to put them to five, and then I can't bolt them out of the game, right? I mean, did I miss it? Right, I mean, how do I kill them if they're at 14? So we know their last card's Empyrean. I don't know. I could, I could have missed it. I'm still kind of like... I, I made a mistake already, so I'm kind of getting back in the zone here. Okay, so let's see. I want K commands because I want an out to a resolved Platinum Empyrean, and it looks like it's a grindy deck. want my stub, and then I would probably want some number of spell bombs. But let's see. I don't love Battle Rage, but I don't know. I'm not super in love with Team or Battle Rage. Lightning Bolt's kind of medium, but so is Fatal Push. Dismember is not great. So I could go something like this. And feel pretty good about it. Leaving three removal spells in case they bring in like P and K or Young Pyromancer. It's a moon deck. I'm not sure. I just played Tron. I played two leagues of Tron, Johnny. It did not go well. Sometimes they board in spreading season threads. I could just cut one of these. The, the I'm gonna go with the uh, whatever it is cost being pretty low. Yeah, I went 06, Johnny. It was two rough leagues. I played against two Blood Moon decks and two Affinity and two Infect decks, though. So, like, uh, I think I just kind of got got screwed. All right, I will oblige my opponent here. All right, um, this hand's decent. Keep this. This hand where we're not really going to play around Blood Moon, probably, because we got to get Sh Death Shadow into play. That's a good one. Flooded Strand. All right, let's get our scribe. Thoughtseize is good. Thoughtseize, let's play Shadow on two next turn. Uh, I think I got, I sequenced poorly. Like, I, you know, obviously growing planes of learning a deck. I had, I lost, a, I lost to KCI, Infect, Infect, Mono Red Prison, Green Red Devotion. And I cannot remember the other deck. What was the other deck? I can't remember. But um, I sequenced some things wrong, for sure. Um... Just not knowing. And I probably sideboarded a little weird. No, it was just infect, infect, KCI, um, green red devotion, and then mono red prison. Because that's not what Independence Day is about. So they're playing blue, white, red. What is the white for? It's got to be for Path to Exiles at your sideboard. This is a thing. We might be in trouble. All right, we're we might be in trouble here. Just got breach for America. At least we have some removal spells left in our deck. But we're gonna have to find them quick because the old thing is gonna get us. 
I'm not playing around Blood Moon as my opponent's got non Blood Moon stuff going on here. All right, so we can get nasty. I'm all about getting nasty. I could just blank this rest in peace. I think I'm just going to blank. Like, I'm going to play Gurmag Angler, and then I'm just going to kill them. Like, as odd as that sounds, I think we're just going to, like, end the game. Like, whatever. If you want to take your turn off rest in peace me, then, like, go for it. Because you're dead as a freaking doorknob if you do that. Leave the looting in there. We have uh, view sideboard. We've got engineered explosives, and that's it. So there's the polluted delta. Okay, so there's a the rest in peace. You got it. Yeah, my opponent's just, like, super dead. And this is why this deck is busted. It's an interactive deck that can control the pace of the game while just being able to completely just wreck your opponent. Like, to put on a clock that they just can't handle. It's like, it's like a blue deck that can ignore hate cards, which is, which is nuts. Now, that being said, we have to kill them before this thing flips. Like, that's, you know, that, that's, that's part of what's going on. I'm going to stub anything. Yeah, we're just going to stub this. Again, we're just going to make it so that they have random draws to make this, to make this thing harder to flip. Like, we're not going to let them filter anything. Okay, yeah. so we'll do this now because so we can hit a fetch land. Spell bomb. It's not that great. So hang on, five. They get in there for eight. Pump this. So we can make them have to chump next turn. Chump the death shadow. Right? So eight. Yeah, so we're going to put both these on top. So put on top. Put on top. I mean, did our opponent draw very poorly, or did we just... Ex I mean, they mulliganed, right? So that's what it was. Let's see. We both mulliganed. They mulled a five. They mulled a five against the Thoughtseize deck, which happens. Whoa. That's aggressive. You can just block the death shot. No, I guess you can't because it's a four. Duh. So they could win this game if they go, like, thing into flip. Like, if they if they just hit runner, runner spells here, they could win. Put one card on bottom, one card on top. Yeah, scoop it out. So I think this is like that Asc Pyromancer's Ascension blue white red deck. Just fix out my spreadsheet to keep going here. All right, this hand. 
So you have a removal spell, a cantrip, and a counter spell. I'm going to keep this hand. It's definitely, like, like if I didn't have a Snapcaster Mage to reuse something, I would probably mulligan because we don't have a threat. But this hand's, you know, this hand's on the lower end of keepable cards. Keepable. Three again, nice. I think this hand is like, it's on the low end of six. It's probably pretty good here. All right. Um. Yeah, I think we're just gonna fire that off. We go down a card, which hurts a little bit in a matchup like this. Yeah. So, I can go like this. Oh, I closed out of Streamlabs on accident. No plays from my opponent. That's nice. Ooh, that was a pretty that was a pretty hot draw. Especially if they're not to know about after I ditched the first one. Alright, so we've got a trade here, because we can snap stub the back end of it. Or right, we're not gonna be able to do that. But we have to at least start to like we can't just let this resolve. We've got to try to slog through this stuff. I'm gonna definitely have a Snapcaster Serum Visions on my turn. But you just gotta chew you just gotta chew through this stuff. Might as well get another red source. Yeah, I have another black source in my hand, though that's likely to get flashback looting out of here. Just gotta keep the cards flowing. Okay, we want both of these. We want the Death Shadow next turn, though. So we're going to put this on top. Maybe we don't want the next... We want that because it's going to do damage to us, I think. I think it's close. We, we can just loot it away if something goes on. But we definitely want this Shadow. I don't think we want to pitch a Snapcaster Mage against the Lingering Souls deck. Push my snap. That's gas. Spectral Procession. Okay. Soren Solemn Visitor. Nice. Jeez, that's a beating. That's going to be a tough one. So we're going to take two. They're going to flash back here. We likely have to Thought Seize my opponent, Soren, and then also like Snap Push one of these. Yeah, I, I think that unfortunately... Humans is on the downswing, but I think that Jun Shadow is in a tough spot because it's got it's a dog against humans and it's a dog against Hollow One, and it does it has a tougher time grinding with the blue decks. So it definitely pains me to say it, but it, it's definitely not. It's pretty inferior inferior to uh, Rex Shadow at the moment. Okay, well, we're just going to do this because we're going to do it anyways. I think this, I think that the the idea that Grixis Shadow folds to humans is wrong. I think it's a 50-50 matchup. There, like, you're a pretty serious dog game one, but I think you're ahead game two. So we're just dead next turn. 
I don't think I have an out. Okay. Yeah, I definitely I think Rick's the Shadow is ahead of humans post sideboard. The problem is you're such a dog game one where the matchup is still pretty difficult. But you know. So we want these explosives. I want stubborn denials. I want last hope. I think we're just gonna try to get real low to the ground. Get rid of this. Ditch these fatal pushes. I guess this black white tokens deck. I hate having stubborn denial in against grindy decks, but like this deck just has too many cards that we just can't beat, in my opinion. I kind of want to keep my lightning bolts, but those aren't great either. Like I usually board out some of our battle rages against grindy decks, but like we're just such a dog to this deck that I think we just need to put like we need to put our heads down and try to just force force it. Yeah, I think Lava Man, Lava Man's probably decent. Yeah, I probably should have boarded in the Lava Dad. Probably gonna have some time to do that. When I played this, I played this deck in the challenge. There's a video of me on YouTube when I did it, and I tried to play a long game with it against their sideboard. Like I won game one, and it just did not work out for the home team. Um, this sucks. Because like these these three cards are really good to what we need. We need to just find a threat. Double disruption into battle rage is really good. I think I'm gonna keep this hand. This is pretty risky, but I think I'm gonna keep it here. Dude, get the 5-0 Archmage. Okay, watery grave into. Jesus. So we're going to take this rest in peace. That's a lot of tough to beat. I beat the huge. <laughs> you just have an advantage, Archmage. All right, there's our boy. So we're just going to play. We're going to get the Death Shadow out there. We're going to start putting a hurting on our opponent. They're probably going to land a Bitter Blossom. And then we can either Thought Seize the other Bitter Blossom or Thought Seize the Soren. God damn. All right, so we know their hand now at least. All right, find me a threat. Okay, so we can get Nasty at least. I'll probably ditch... So I really want to Thought Seize a Bitter Blossom, play Gurmag Angler, which means I need at least these three here. So I'm going to ditch Land, and I think I'm going to ditch Battle Rage, because we can snap the Battle Rage back at some point. We're definitely in a tough spot. Gonna take one of the bitter blossoms. And then I'm probably gonna snap cast her back and discard the Soren. That we needed that death shadow on two to live. Well, now we're just going to play this Death Shadow. Because if we hit a land drop, my opponent taps out for a Sorum, we likely kill them next turn. Swear to God, if they hit a Fatal Push, you've got to be kidding me. Oh my God, that is so savage. Ugh.
And we hit it too. God, that was rough. So how do I win? We're gonna flash this looting back. I gotta find like a death shadow. Okay, so we just gotta go like this. Plus one plus O. So I got I'm gonna attack Soren and hope my opponent blocks. Because if they don't block, then I can't play my Death Shadow. They might not block. They might just like take this and be like, whatever, I'm going to kill you. Okay. So my opponent can only do three damage to me next turn. So I think we're just going to go Fetch Shock, play Death Shadow, pass. And then we've got like a couple outs that win us the game next turn. Providing my opponent has nothing. Like Battle Rage, Snapcaster Mage, and Engineered Explosives help win us the game next turn. Okay, so play Concealed Courtyard. Those two Fatal Pushes they ripped were just like super, super rough for the home team. All right, well, there's a redraw. Come on, baby. Put on the bottom, put on the bottom, and we're just, like, super dead. Man, I think we would have been in this game if they hadn't, like, if they, even if they had got one of those fatal pushes. Like, if they had hit a push, we at least were in it. But that was just tough. That was tough. And they ripped on us. I rip on, like, this deck here, top deck's better than most decks in the format. So, like, occasionally, like, I'm going to, I out, you know, I, I run my opponent over. So that happens. Now I play I played Esper Shadow once. It was decent. I think you need Battle Rage though. Um, we're gonna keep this hand. We have two discard spells, which are the best cards in our deck. We can manipulate with Bobble and we have a Snapcaster Mage. So we're gonna keep this. My opponent plays like a Tron land that I'm gonna throw up. Tron land are humans. I don't really want to see Tron or humans in this hand. Opponents just tanking in their own upkeep. Just legit. Alright, so we're gonna play against humans. Alright, so let's look at our top card. We're looking for a death shadow. We don't need another thought seed. So let's fetch. Probably just fetch Blood Crypt. Probably have to restart Moto here in a second. Because we're getting a little laggy. Alright, Dismember's not bad. We do need to, like, the Dismember means we need a Shadow even worse. Oh, that's gross. I'm going to take a Reflector Mage with the idea of dismembering a Freebooter, Thought Seizing the second Reflector Mage. That's the plan. Oh, 
Oh man, we shuffled that away. Well, at least now I can go fetch a basic dot sees my opponent's last two cards away. Which is these. Man, I need I need I definitely need a restart moto. We're lagging quite a bit here. So I took my dismember, which makes sense. That's tough. So I can take Freebooter and Mantis Rider. If my opponent's not really doing a lot, I think that's what I gotta do here. Like, then try to like Snapcaster Thoughtseize back and hit the Reflector Mage. I just can't deal with a Mantis Rider next turn. Even though it's quite a bit of damage. Okay, they're going to draw. They're going to do Cavern of Souls. So Reflector Mage and one other card. In comes Vile. So this is probably either Meddling Mage, naming Snapcaster Mage, which is bad for the home team. We're slowly diminishing our ways to trade. Yeah. It's a good play from the opponent. So if I can draw a Death Shadow into a discard spell off this Thought Scour, then I've got a chance. It's not one of them. It's not what we needed. Oh, gross. Yeah, we're just dead. We're pretty dead there. We're going to be taking three. My opponent can reflect and rage our blocker. The dismember is no more, not really castable anymore. So against this deck, I like bringing in all of these. I want to cut my Street Wraiths, cut two Gurmag Anglers, and then cut my Stubborn Denials and one Thought Seize. And then I will submit. And I'm going to restart Moto at the beginning of this next game. Just going to let my opponent know. Okay, we're starting over. Lagging pretty hard. Would like to play first. Hang on. Okay, so let's. We're just gonna let's switch it here. To. Oh, there's a little. Oh no, I don't want that one. I want the sponsor page. Okay, we're just gonna restart. I appreciate y'all for hanging out here. Well taking your time, or hanging out here while I fix things out, figure things out. If you guys like it, please hit, believe me, please hit the follow button. Uh, if you want to support me more, then run over to my YouTube page and subscribe to that. That's free, doesn't cost you a thing, which I know everybody loves. So go over and check that out for me. It's gonna be a tough league. We're already we already have lost a game, lost a match, and we're down a game. So we're gonna to have to claw out of this one by the skin of our teeth. But we have the tools at the sideboard to beat this deck, I believe.
I hope everyone's having a good day on the old uh, day America was born. This day was kind of born. Okay, so we're going to go back to the stream. As we're loading back up here. Okay, so let's get back to my hand here. So I'm on the play. This hand's pretty medium, but I have a fatal push on one, and I can bobble for more reaction. It's a pretty quick angler. I think I'm going to keep this hand. I like having a lot of lands against this deck to fight through Thalia, and it plays well with my threes, and it plays well with uh, Grim Lava Mancer. So I'm going to keep this. This might be loose. Like I could, I could. If somebody told me they wanted to mull this hand, I would understand. Like this is this is more. I like to keep hands like this because of how I like to play the matchup. And if someone else wanted to play the matchup in a different way, I would not bother. I would not fault them. We're gonna keep that. This is just like how I think the games, I think it's good how the games turn out, if that makes sense. So hopefully we get something to push here. And we're just going to push this. The high impact targets that I want to EE are all on two. Cantrip. Alright, that's pretty good. So this is going to take target Reflector Mage. Unless they have a bunch of ones in their hand. Okay, yeah. So now we have the Oriok Champion covered. Which is great. Uh, Drovix, thank you very much. I appreciate the follow. You're great. This is coming into play tapped. We're going to make sure we have enough sources. Red sources, because we want to be able to, like, if we draw Grim Lava Mancer, we want that thing to go. Okay, so we didn't need another one of those lands. We are just going to fill our graveyard up even more, though. So we're going to fetch shock. We want to keep this graveyard stocked. Best hit for us next turn is we obviously want, like, any any spell is good, but we want our opponents to play into this engineered explosives. Which they might see through because I didn't take the Oriok Champion. I took the Reflector Mage. So they might be like, well, that doesn't make sense. So they might not play into it. Okay, so there's a noble. So come on. All right, so this thing gets in for three. We're gonna attack and then e. Oh, they don't even block. They don't even do that. Okay. Oh. So I know my opponent's hand. How if I play this Liliana? How does it die? That's what I want to know. It dies if my opponent plays a Mantis Rider. If they top deck Mantis Rider, then it dies. They can they can cycle Horizon Canopy and find a Mantis Rider. I think it the I think the juice is worth the squeeze to start working this though. So we just have to fade Mantis Rider. My opponent's last two cards are Horizon Canopy, so they're going to get two looks at Manus Rider. If we don't get Manus Rider, we're in good shape. Thalia's Lieutenant doesn't do it. Oh, no, no, no. Turn off auto yields. Um, I'm going to leave the Shockland in my hand, actually. 
because I want to be able to shock myself if it's when it's death shadow time. So no Mantis Rider. No Mantis Rider, Phil Boy. That was this here. Did they rip a Mantis Rider? Are you kidding me? Oh, it's a Reflector Mage? Okay. That sucks, but it's beatable. Because we just hit the... We go up on this. Explosives away. The... Um, Oriok Champion. Tilt. I think there was actually merit to plussing on this Reflector Mage there. That might have been a poor play from me. Because then the Noble Hierarch sticks around and they get more mana, which plays into their Horizon Canopies, but there's less chance that this dies. So there's the Canopy. So they're digging. They're digging for like a Thalia's Lieutenant. Noble Hierarch also kills this thing. Again, we're going to let this trigger happen because if my opponent attacks with both creatures, then my Liliana sticks around. They saw through it, though. Which is sad. Tough for the home team. And there's... Okay. All right, we're flooding out quite a bit. Um, I can go fetch my... Because we have another Gurmag Angler, I kind of want to just go fetch here. Get my basic Swamp, and then just like pay five mana plus two so that I can play another Angler next turn. Like it's A lot of the time it's right to hold your lands in this matchup, but I think that I've got to... Uh, Make it so these Gurmag Anglers are castable. We need to fade a Phantasmal Image or another Reflector Mage. Image or Reflector Mage is real bad for the home team. Oh, come on. God damn it. This is just an absolute beating. All right. Well, at least we can get rid of them. So let's go red, blue, or black. Three colors. Again, I kind of want to just play this land again in order to have the most mana in play for the least amount of damage. Because I'm, I'm going to have to, like, for me to win this game, I'm going to have to, like, delve Gurmag Angler and play Angler on back-to-back -back turns. So, like, this is kind of loose. I should just attack with our Hierarch. Okay, that value is fine. Okay, so that's a really good draw. There's no reflector mage. Okay, that's good. So we're gonna image my nasty germasty. 
And we're just going to let, if the, he goes to swing in with that, I think we're just going to let that happen. And we can just battle rage it. Because I don't really want to trade my angler for their angler. Especially when, well, I can't even trade it because of this noble hierarchy. So we're just going to take six. So one, two, four cards in the graveyard. Two mana is three cards in the graveyard. So wait, three mana, four cards in the graveyard. Two more mana. This then puts four cards in the graveyard. Um... Plus three more is seven. Okay, so we can start off with this. So I would like to not use my Battle Rage on this if I don't have to. Alright, so we don't have to. So let's get in with Nasty. And here, this game's probably going to end next turn. So I'm going to bluff some sort of interaction because my opponent might play around it. And I think it's my best chance here. Like, we're not beating Mantis Rider. We can basically beat everything else but Mantis Rider at this point. A Reflector Mage is, it would be pretty backbreaking. God, come on, dude. Values Lieutenant. So block, block, take one. Oh, so that's pretty good. So block. Get this out of here. And then I swing in with both of my creatures because they have to block each one of my creatures or they die. So we'll get this zombie fish out of here. I don't know what my opponent could vial in. I guess, like, so if my opponent goes to vial in something, I need to think. And this gets them killed. I don't think there's any card my opponent can have that beats me here if they don't block. They don't block all of them. Because like if they if they activate their vial before damage, I'm just gonna respond to it and I'm going to battle rage my death shadow. What a weird game. Okay, so we're going to have to mulligan fairly aggressively on the draw. I think we mulligan to one mana interaction. Like, we have to mulligan to a Fatal Push, a uh, Lightning Bolt, or a Dismember, or like a Grim Lava Mancer. Sometimes I like boarding out another Angler for a Thoughtseize on the draw, but I, I don't think I'm going to do that.
So I'm going to keep this hand because Grim Lava Mancer is that good. And I have a Serum Visions to help smooth me out. And if I just draw a land, this hand's insane. It's pretty risky. I'd love to hit a Faithless Looting. Faithless Looting would be very good to get rid of one of these anglers. Okay, so that's that's just the absolute stones. So let's go get Blood Crypt. Get our homeboy down here. We're going to get nasty with the Lava Dad. I would have fetched Vents if I hadn't hit a land on my second one. For sure. All right, Thalia Garden of Freedom is gas. So we're gonna, I think I'm actually going to, I kinda just wanna smoke this, cause we're gonna be able to outclass this champion of the Paris very quickly. I wanna make sure that I hit my land drops and get my death shadows into play. So we're just gonna hit this. And then I'm going to Serum Visions. And we just want to hit lands at this point. I should have kept that Mishra's Bobble on top. Because it's a free card. Chat's lagging. I've been going for a while. And if my opponent attacks me here, I can just go like Fatal Push into Death Shadow. Even if they attack now. If they attack me now, I can just play two Death Shadows. If I draw a Fetch Land, then we just have it all. The Meddling Mage is pretty bad. Yeah, jeez. What a combo. So I need a fetch land off the top. Fetch land off the top, and we're playing magic. If I draw a fetch land, I'm going to shoot this, push this, play a death shadow. I'm taking four, which puts me to ten. Fetch basic, more than likely. All right, so we need a basic land off the top, or a fetch land off the top. Come on. Oh, that's not good at all. That's probably just game. It was either that or I was going to try to get the freebooter and play one shadow. But now we're in a little bit of trouble. So I'm probably going to end up chump blocking this this turn. Mantis Rider, so five. Yep. So taking. You should have a lieutenant here too. Yeah, we're playing Bob. Okay. Just going to block here. Yeah, this is tough. Yeah. GG's opponent. Likely I should have mulliganed my first hand. I had one piece of interaction, Grim Lava Mancer, but these two Gurmag Anglers were just like such dead cards. So, maybe, maybe. It's close, because Lava Mancer is very good against them. But if those Gurmag Anglers had probably been anything, even if it had been something that could have filled, like, 
If I would have kept, I should have kept the bobble on top because even though it's not a land, it puts the second card in my graveyard for Lava Mancer, which gives me an activation. So I punted that game. I should have kept the bobble just to be able to cat, play Lava Mancer and activate it. So I tossed that one. That was my fault. I think if I can activate Lava Mancer one more time in that game, I probably win. So we're on the play, I'm going to keep this. We're going to lead off with the Serum Visions. We don't want Battle Rage, we do want Street Wraith. River of Tears. You don't say. I don't want this. I do want this because it's just going to increase my delve. This is purely just for like delve considerations. I can scry. I'm going to scry on my opponent's turn because they could have discard spells easier. I'm going to assume we're playing against fairies. They play a bitter blossom here. I'm going to be a little sad that I didn't try to like look for a stubborn denial, but you know, like such is life. What do we got now? We have a Faithless Looting. We're going to want that. Probably I'm just going to cast it with my first thing of the turn. That's tough. But at least we're going to be able to ditch a couple lands. So let's get a Blood Crypt. We could Spell Stutter Sprite this, which would be... Which would not work because I would just push the spell tutter, spell stutter sprite. That's what they're gonna do. Remand. Well, I'm glad they're remanded that, but I'm gonna just recast it and then cast Gurmag Angler. Just ditching both of these lands. We're gonna be able to get to the second angler. I, th I think this game's gonna go long. But my opponent feels a little foolish about that remand. I definitely didn't want to see that one. I think there's no way it's right to pitch Snapcaster in a remand matchup. Like, yes, the second Gurmag Angler is rough, but we're going to be able to flash this back and ditch these two Gurmag Anglers. Especially when I have Serum Visions in my hand. I think you're a little too aggressive with getting rid of Snapcaster Mages, Teddy. Which is my opinion. So they're going to counter this, which we'll take. Remand makes it a little bit better. Cycle this. Okay, so that's for the second main phase. So we're going to get in here and attack. Thought sees them. Likely take a Cryptic Command or something. I would assume they're going to like Cryptic Counterbalance my Angler. Yeah, Bounce Angler. This is why we attacked first, because we saw this coming. They're drawing a card. That's interesting. That is interesting. I wonder if they play a Damnation in their main deck. I think we're okay if they if they Damnation both these two because we have enough leftovers. Yeah, I just wanted to be mana efficient to tell you the truth. Um, 
I didn't really have a good second play. If I just played my shadow, then I didn't have anything else going on. I, just, I wanted to be like, I wanted to just do stuff. So my opponent has to act here, so we're just going to go to combat. If they go cryptic, we're just going to snap thought, seize them. I would love a stubborn denial. A stubborn denial here would be great. It's like a misbind click. Return permanent to hand, draw a card. Okay. You have a fatal push as well. So seven cards in hand. I think I'm just going to snap thought seize them. Could have done this pre-combat, but this makes it so that my shadow did hit. Because I could have gone like counter this tap. And now like a lightning bolt lethal next turn. Spell snare. Okay. Ancestral visions right on time. So I don't really want to play another threat because my opponent, like, how do I lose? They start chaining cryptic commands together, and cryptic commands being chained doesn't matter how many creatures I have. So we're just going to wait. I don't want to get damnationed. I've got plenty of removal spells. If I cast the Gurmag or it doesn't work out, I can't cast my other ones. Alright, we're just going to cast that after combat. Yep, tap creatures, draw a card. I was just chaining the old cryptic commands together. Let's hope they don't have another answer to the Snapcaster Mage. They have a opt. Okay, so they're looking for... I put a card on the bottom. Thoughtseize. This is how you win these kind of matchups. Like, you just are more mana efficient than they are, and they have to use their cards to tread water, and you just like casting multiple spells a turn. Uh, what do we got here? So, Snapcaster Mage. This is a maybe. We want this. We want Liliana. EE -E is like borderline. And we want this. So, I don't want Stubborn Denial. I, I, mean, I don't want Dismember. I don't want Fatal Push. Battle Rage is a no go. To cut one more card. I'd like to keep some number of lightning bolts in to deal with whatever the dumb card is, the uh, fairy. I'm going to board out one of these. Uh, I could cut another, I could cut like two more street wraiths and bring in engineered explosives to be able to wipe the board. We'll have tokens or hit bitter blossoms, which I don't hate. They might also have Liliana at the board. I'm going to try this. I didn't want the fourth in the draw because of Bitter Blossom. Because like now I've got ten ways to interact with Bitter Blossom on the draw on turn one. Between counter spells and uh, discard spells. Sounds very good. No threat, but it'll they'll come. River of Tears. We got a Relic. Okay. We're going to let my opponent Relic away. I don't understand why they don't play Spell Bomb. Spell Bomb just seems way better than any deck that can, that can take advantage of the black. Because they're a Snapcaster Mage deck too. Okay, we don't want Nasty. 
Let's hope we don't see two engineered explosives. Or two bitter blossoms. Whoa. I don't have any idea what's going on here. I guess we're not playing against a fairy deck. I was wrong. Man, we shuffled the old nasty away. What a tilt. So we're going to thought seize the cryptic command. I'm going to do this so uh, they might cast a remand on it. I don't want to fire off this lightning bolt yet because, or this other thought seeds, because I can deal with whatever my opponent has going around here. It was just the last card. I don't know. But I just didn't see another card that was better than the Wraith. Uh, we're rid of this. Hopefully my opponent hit a spell here. They did. They hit a snap cast a mage. So we're gonna merc that Talran. Hopefully my opponent pops off this relic soon. So I would like to be able to play my Gurmag Angler. Okay, nice. What a guy. I think I'm going to cycle my spell bomb now. I just want some action. I just want to like do something while I have extra mana. I don't really know what my opponent's doing over here. I mean, they probably drew a, a spell. Yes, I agree. We can cut anglers. They're ready for it. Command's good. If we get to cast it on this uh, on this Talrand, this angler's going to be very good. I'm going to get a tap land. I don't think that they're playing like Lightning Bolt, so playing a 3-3 Shadow isn't terrible. And this game's likely to go long. I don't want to get chip-shotted by this Talrand token. I'm a big fan of cutting anglers against decks with graveyard hates or decks that can't kill angler. While angler is your best um, threat against fair decks, it can be worse in multiples. And if you can't kill it, then the second one is usually not, you're usually winning if they can't kill the first one. Wow, my opponent's just tanking here. They draw something that could be relevant? Yeah, I'm just going to play another Relic and then pass. We're playing Drago here, which makes me a tad nervous. I don't really want to play Drago against this deck, but it is it is where we currently are. I hope everyone's having a great day that's watching. I'm glad you're all hanging out here. 
I might bolt my opponent to start to set up Gurmag Angler. Because I'm basically just cycling these spell bombs at, these, at this point. Yeah, my opponent's got a handful of actions, so... I don't feel confident how this game is going. I'm going to actually, because I might hit Thought Scour. I'm, I'm, I'll be interested in casting Thought Scour if I hit it. I'm not, I, think, I think it's a losing proposition to bolt them now. It's just too aggressive. That's a great draw. That's something that will likely get some action out of my opponent. It's another very good draw. So we are pulling together what we need in order to turn this game around, I think. Last two draw steps have been very good. Okay. So I'm likely to go Lightning Bolt, whatever my opponent, like Lightning Bolt this turn, and then um, go like Snap Thought Seize on next turn. Just be kind of, or if they counter that, just K Command the Talran. Because they're probably waiting for this Talran until they have enough mana to protect it. And we can beat the 2-2. If they can answer this bolt, then we're, we can still beat the 2-2. But they can vapor snag their own creature, which might be a good play. Very Conclave. Nice. All right, come on, let me get in here. I play slow, and my opponent's making me look like a speed demon. Ah, oh, sure. So I think I'm actually going to K command, bing, bing. I put a card on the bottom. Alternatively, I can snap bolt this. One, two, or I can play Gurmag Angler and have stuff in denial. Right this is tough. I think I want to play Gurmag Angler and hold up Stub. Makes my Snapcaster a little worse, but my Snapcaster flashing back Stubborn Denial is probably going to be good enough to win this game. I'm going to take four this turn, more than likely. But we can K Command our way out of the game. Next turn, we can just race them. My opponent has to commit three mana to every attack, and we're swinging back. And at worst comes to worst, I can EE for zero to deal with this. To deal with this one, and then try to get this one out of here. So I think that's likely what I'm going to do next turn. Just EE for zero, attack. Try to pop at the end of turn, take two from the Conclave. Because I'm losing this race, but only just barely. I would assume this K command is going to be pretty big. Snapcaster Mage. Okay. So here's where the rubber meets the road. So I think I've got to go, I think I have to shock this card. So the last card was a land, which is kind of sad. So I need to find something 
that deals with this fairy conclave. They putting a card on the top is probably is pretty bad for me. I would assume that I'm dead here. Wow, they're not going to attack with their Conclave? That is wild. Am I crazy? We hit another Talrand? That's got to be what they did. Yeah. We're going to want a little more removal in game two, I think. I thought we were playing against a fairies deck. Turns out that's not what we're doing. All right, so we still have some life here. Does not take a lot for my opponent to kill me here. Like the longer this Talran stays in play, the worse it gets. This K commands have been pretty good though. It did suck that we got an island with the last one. Turn this to their hand. I don't understand why they're doing that. We just play it again. Are you like target like getting revolt? I don't understand. It's the Ara the Orobo of the pat the kind of plays around K command, which is nice. Like you can always just bounce it to your hand and discard it. So I think I've actually just got to dismember. Well, that's just game. Yeah, because we can't. We were just a little too low on life totals there. It's all right. We're back here for game three. OK. So I think I want a little more removal. I don't think these are good. I don't really think we want Liliana. I think they're putting a little too much pressure on us. I am going to bring in some Fatal Pushes. I think that's enough removal. I can cut a Gurmag Angler and bring in, like, probably another Liliana. Just cut all these Street Wraiths. I don't really want Street Wraith against the, like, Talran deck. Something that can pressure me in the air so well. Would I like to play first? Yes, I would. I'm going to keep this hand. It could go sideways, though. I don't think you can mulligan hands like these, but it's definitely subpar. I think the game was too, a little... I just didn't really... I thought the game was a little too fast for Lava Man, and they're already bringing in a bunch of graveyard hate. So, I don't know. I think that Talran, like... Well, maybe the game's not too fast for Lava Man. They're bringing in a lot of graveyard hate that we saw, and I don't really want to play against that much. I did this in order to be able to stub a turn one um, relic for my opponent. Like that was the plan here, because if I can keep my graveyard intact, I think I'm going to do a pretty good job in this game.
Hopefully they don't have another one. So this is going to get me Blood Crypt. And we're going to Serum Visions into a Spell Bomb. And we're just looking for action at this point. Both of those are action. So let's put this on, put this on top, and then we're going to put this on top of it. So I can go Thought Seize into Death Shadow, which is gas. Okay, so they ditch of visions, which we'll take for sure. Okay, so this is a pretty clear thing. The redirect's going to be kind of annoying, but we're probably just going to sit behind this Snapcast Rage, to be honest. Or sit behind this Death Shadow and then just attack my opponent. That redirect's annoying, but we weren't beating up on that uh, thing in the ice anytime soon. So we're just going to cycle this now. I'm going to miss the land drop, which is worth looking at. I kind of want to just turn the pressure up on my opponent and flash in a uh, flash in a snapcaster mage at the end of the turn here. But I don't really want. To, I'd rather peck them for five points a turn. Yeah, I think we're just going to like start leaning on our opponent. Because they have inevitability on us right now, and I want to—I don't want them to be able to like play at a stable, be stable. And if they just counter this, then we just like K command it back, make them discard, discard a card. That's pretty good. Now we just crack for eight. My opponent plays Snapcaster Mage here. We're going to hopefully they ditch their. Cryptic or their redirect. Okay. So we could have shocked ourselves in order to make this lethal, but if we draw a land, it's lethal. If we like there's there are many draws we have to make this lethal. And I don't want to go nuts too quickly. Like I can even thought I can even snap thought see see versions on my main phase to find something. So I think I'm gonna do that. And here we're just looking for a way to deal damage to ourselves. Oh shoot, I misclicked. Oh. Uh, I guess if I had clicked on the Thoughtseize, it was, it was good that I didn't, as they would have just redirected it. But I still lose life. Okay, that's just fine anyways. Put on the bottom. Put on the bottom. Got lucky there. So they're going to have to 
go get their fairy conclave. And we're just gonna fetch an isle. There's no need to go two nuts here. Like they're they're gonna activate their conclave and chump my death shadow. And it doesn't matter how big my shadow is. If they have dismember, that's gonna feel pretty gross. But they're down on land. They're down quite a bit, like a land and a dismember, which is going to make their ancestral visions worse. They don't have lands. Okay, so we're going for the last. This is going to be the last match of the day. We've been live for about four hours. I'm getting a little tired. I'm going to mulligan this hand. Keep this one. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so we're playing against KCI. So let's cycle. Just keep on keeping on here. Last guy was good. I mean, our best our best um, threat in this matchup is Gurmag Angler. Gurmag Angler is a much better threat overall than uh, um, Death Shadow because if they play uh, Engineer Explosives and Grove of the Burn Willows. It's a tough matchup. This deck's very good. Icker Wellspring. I'm going to get some Icker. Should I go get this? <sighs> but our opponent literally just cantripped twice in two turns and they're a colorless deck. Like that, that's just like blows my mind. Okay, so we're going to get Steam Vents, and we're going to go like this. We're just going to leave as many cards in our graveyard as possible because, like, end of turn, Snap Thought Scour is in play. Um, snap Stub is obviously something we're interested in. If they just jam KCI here, we're definitely in trouble, which we couldn't beat. Turn three on the play. In before our Snapcaster Mage. Okay, there's the Trawler. Trawler only gets back Opal, so they're not drawing many cards yet. Because the Icker Wellspring gets back... Um, Icker Wellspring gets back Chromatic Sphere, and then all of a sudden they're out. Okay, so now, now they can do the chain twice. So we likely are dead here. Wish we mulligan. I mean, this deck's very good. So we have Opal back. As soon as they show me a loop, I'm going to concede. Like, Mirror Retriever right now is game... Chromatic Sphere, which is what they, they got, so they have Sphere still in hand. That goes back Mox Opal. So I just need a loop. Just show me a loop and then we're good. That just gets back Opal. My opponent can't draw cards anymore. Unless they sack Ironworks. 
they have Emrakul mana right now. Okay. Okay, they got me. Turn three. That happens though. Okay, so I want this card. I want these two right here. And I just cut my removal. And we sub. The KCI elites would not like what's going on here. Um, one, two. One, two, three in the graveyard to start. I'm going to keep this hand. I've got like the thought, the serum visions are going to be able to dig me to the interaction that I need. They mold a five. Jeez, that's tough. But I've got a threat. I have a way, I'm like, I am filling my graveyard. So they have a Mox Opal on top. They put on the bottom. Like we have many, like we have many good setups here. We do need a land. That's so awkward. So we're going to put on top, put on top. So this is a turn three. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. I'm stupid. I draw a card with the bobble. We're good. So they have an opal. I'm getting a little tired making some mistakes here. Turn two nasty is what we need. EE for zero. So this turn's just turning on. Okay. Hand slow. No discard or counters. It needs two more lands. Yeah, we had double can. We had triple cantrip though, which like I, I can see why you want to do it, and it was pretty easy to turn on. Like the angler didn't need much to turn on there. All right, we're gonna put both of these on top. Bobble my opponent on their turn. It was a good rep. So Mirror Retriever on top. So the Mirror Retriever, we're going to counter the Mirror Retriever. Yeah, we're going to counter this. So they have Mirror Retriever X in their hand. And then we're just going to snap, counter their next play to get more pressure on the board. Cut this clock down. The last card's Mirror Retriever. I uh, tapped poorly. Should have done with this, left this up. Could have looting. It was poor. All right, you got it, man. So, okay. 
No, I wanted to make it a two-turn clock. Snapcaster Mage cuts a turn off the clock. There, Teddy. Just keep it. Shipping this. Uh, this hand's pretty good if there's a black land on top of my deck. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a little tired than Fred than uh, Teddy. Just made a mistake there. I have been going for about four hours. I, I stopped streaming about one o'clock last night, so I'm probably just like talking about my ass a little bit. Um. I'm going to keep this. That's. I need a red land. So we're going to put that on top. And we're going to shock ourselves on one. Yeah, I was a little. And then I should have. Here's with the discard spell in my hand. I kind of wanted to be mana efficient with my turn also. So that's good. That's good. Yep, you get stirrings. I'm definitely just gonna smoke this Mox Opal. Cause like I just need to slow my I just need to slow my opponent down. This is going to get Blood Crypt. We're going to put the shields down. Start here. And then we'll see what we're what's coming first. So angler is what we want here. We want angler more than death shadow. So I actually don't like because the well. So we're on this on top because they can easily have like an ee -E to blow my shadows up. So we want to put the angler on top first. Then we're gonna lead off with an inquisition. Yeah. So there's the explosives. So we're just going to ignore it. We're going to take this Icker Wellspring. Just try to slow them down. Next turn, we're going to cast Angler, and then I'm going to try to hit the Ironworks. Well, they've... What do you got? Mindstone into an Icker. So now... Mox Opal, so they have Explosives, Ironworks. So I have to hit the Ironworks or we're in trouble. So let's hit this Ironworks here. Yeah, so we're never going to be able to do anything with our Death Shadows this game. We're just going to bluff some action here. So I wanted to play... I um, I wanted to play whatever it is. Inquisition of Kozilek. Because they were two mana off from a... Whatever it is. A uh, So the Ironworks comes in this turn. They were two turns off from playing Ironworks. And like it's very unlucky my Shadows do anything. Against this deck. Yeah, we're just going to like F6 out here. This is a tough draw on them all. We're likely dead. Yeah, if they're doing that, that's a, definitely a really big um, 
show of power. They're definitely digging, but they can dig like three more cards at least. Because they can just sack Wellspring, sack Wellspring, sack, yeah. So they have a lot going on. They're incentivized not to do that because to just dig. So now here comes the Retriever. So the Retriever probably wins in this game because it just brings back so many cards. Or only brings back one card, I guess. So it finds them another Wellspring. So the the Icarid is basically, or not the Icarid, the uh, Mirror Retriever is basically two more draw steps. I think this is a tight matchup. Even though like it doesn't look like it should be, it's just because of how consistent this deck is. This deck is very good against Thoughtseize because of how redundant. This deck's very good. I think this is another reason why Ancient Stirring shouldn't be in the format. Like, Ancient Stirring allows this colorless deck to play an incredibly consistent game. Even on a mold of five, they were very close to get it because of like the way that this deck is built. And I don't remember if they drew Ancient Stirring's last game. They did. So Inventor's Fair goes get goes and gets um, Mirror Retriever. They play Mirror Retriever, and then that should be. Excuse me. As long as they have two Mirror Retrievers, it should be game. So they don't have the Retriever. They have two Scrap Trawlers. Scrap Trawler gets back Mirror Retriever. You sack a Scrap Trawler to it. Okay, so there's Star. I'm just like dead. They're just showing off, right? Because like they just start sacking. Yeah, I'm dead. We're gonna we're gonna scoop it up. We're not gonna sit through this any longer. I am tired. Rough day at the office today. It was a rough day. We went 0 and 6 with Tron, and then went just 2 3 with Death Shadow.